Hi Church, my name is Paula Dring and I'm one of the regional pastors at the um, Central Manchester location. And um, I've been asked to um, do this devotion today um, for the series on my community, um, about belonging and growing um, in a community of faith. Um, so I was thinking of all the different people that might be um, watching this today um, and where they might be in life. And um, some of you might be thriving in church, have a great circle of people around you and be loving life. Um, others might be in church um, and have never felt lonelier. Um, still others might be walking through some of their toughest challenges and trials of life um, that they've ever faced. And, you know, I could go on and on with different examples. Um, so I thought what I would do is share um, with you some little snippets of my various different church experiences from over the years um, and how being a part um, of church has impacted my life. Um, so I've grown up in church my whole life. I started out in a tiny um, seaside church called Harborside Church. Um, it was literally 10 feet from the water's edge. Um, the average age was about 70 years old. Um, but whilst these um, men and women of God um, might have been winding down in their latter years, um, instead they realised the, um, the next generation needed them. Um, so they actually invested in a minibus and someone would drive around the town on a, on a Sunday picking up kids um, from the local estates um, to take them to church. Now, some of these kids lived on the roughest streets in the town. Um, their parents really, you know, admitted freely that they only actually sent them to church um, so that they could get a lie in on a Sunday morning and some peace. Um, but the church welcomed these children with open arms. Um, I grew up seeing the importance of sowing um, into others, even when at times it was messy. Um, the church really blessed the community that it was in. Um, I made friends with other kids that in no way would I have met kids like that um, without the church welcoming them in. I wouldn't have come across these kids. Um, so church, let's get out into the world and meet people from all walks of life um, because they need us. Um, in turn, I guarantee that you will be blessed by them and by sharing your life and your walk with them. Um, sadly, most of those children stop coming to church um, once they hit their teen years. Um, so to my delight, we just happened um, to move to the big city, the big smoke. And we joined a church that could not have been more different. It was much bigger, um, very lively, all sorts going on. Um, suddenly, there were young people in large numbers and they wanted to be in church. They loved church um, and there was so much going on um, and I found it amazing. Um, but what I want to share with you about this church experience was about the youth pastors. So there were two couples that ran the youth team. Um, the first couple um, were very much the face of the team. They were up the front of church. They were leading big youth events in the city and, you know, in the region. Um, and, you know, they were very much the cool youth pastors by, you know, in every sense of the word. Then there was the other couple. They didn't work for the church. Um, they weren't really very cool, I have to say. Um, they they didn't do much upfront stuff. Um, but what they did do was that they ran one of the um, youth life groups. Um, and I am blessed beyond belief that I was asked to have been part of their, um, their youth life group. Um, and these youth pastors sewed into me like no one had ever sewn before. Um, it didn't matter to them who my parents were. Um, they liked me for me. I always was welcome in their house. Um, I was this super awkward, super shy um, kid. And there must have been many times when they just thought, gosh, we've had a hard day at work. This is the last thing we need. It's just some super quiet girl just sitting there very awkwardly. But they never made me feel like that. Um, they invested in me entirely and in the exact same way they invested in each and every young person that was in that life group. 
Um, we were, were valued. Um, I felt seen for the first time. Um, I felt worthy um, because they loved me and valued me and because of their input into my life. But they also sowed their, their knowledge and experience of Christ um, with us all. And, you know, to the point we spent a whole year studying the Apostles' Creed with teenagers. Um, you know, that's, that's the kind of level that they were at. It was just constant sewing. And the result of that is that each and every one of those young people from that life group are still serving God around the world 25 years later. And whilst I'm sure there was fruit from the first couple, the lasting fruit seen from the time and investment of the second couple is without measure. So cut then to my uni church experience. I was painfully shy still and found a lovely spirit-filled church in Edinburgh where I was studying. Um, and I would often be, you know, in a room filled with people, but never felt so alone. I felt so alone. Um, I didn't feel seen suddenly. Um, I didn't feel like I was good enough. Um, and I'm in no way criticising the church. I think I was definitely giving off the don't talk to me, don't look at me vibes. Um, but again, there was one couple. They were the pits. No, they literally were the pits, Mr and Mrs Pitt. And they gently and lovingly invited me into their home, shared their family with me. Um, at a time when I was constantly surrounded by students um, and in that student bubble, yeah, I was so lonely and um, I just needed some grounding and God knew exactly what I needed in that season and provided it. But he also allowed me to walk um, through that season so that I would always look to him as my counsellor, my friend, my saviour, uh, my lover. Um, but in that, I never missed a Sunday, no matter how hard I found it attending. Being a part of the, that church, whilst challenging, also helped me to grow in my walk with God. Please, church, don't turn away from God or church when the hard times hit. Run towards him and his people. So then finally... I found myself in Manchester. I was in a small church plant where, you know, I'll be honest, it was hard. It was hard, but I got stuck in and I served my socks off. Um, I made a few deep friendships with people, ended up getting married as well, um, and really got to know God in a whole new way. I remember crying out to God at a conference and praying, God, whatever you are doing, Wherever you are doing it, I want to be right in the centre of that, God. Don't you dare leave me behind, um, was, were the actual words that I prayed. I, in fact, I shouted them at God. Don't you dare leave me behind. A little bit irreverent, um, but he knew my heart. Um, so even though church was a hard slog, I stuck at it because I hadn't heard from God that he wanted me elsewhere. And then... Um, Actually, what happened, um, you know, those, those friends, those people around me encouraged me. They were holding me up. They were praying for me um, and believing in me whilst I kind of, you know, was crying out to God um, that, I, that I wanted to kind of not get left behind. And then suddenly we got word that pastors Glyn and Soph, were, they were coming to Manchester to start their church in my little church. God was moving the centre of what he was doing to where I was. I thought I would have to go, you know, somewhere else to, to you know, to find what God was doing, the late, you know, what, where God was moving. But no, he moved what he was doing to where I was. And it was like I'd been liberated. And over the last decade and a half, God has been building his church and there've been many challenges and many, many triumphs and different seasons of my life. But through it all, I've developed a circle of people who lift me up, encourage me, pray for me um, and with me and challenge me when, you know, I do need it <laughs> often. Um, I've been carried through some of my toughest challenges and had friends literally standing 
by the edge of grave of a gravestone as I said goodbye I've had people believe in our business endeavors even when they were falling apart we've had people um you know the church stand with us through illness and multiple redundancies and potential scary diagnoses that thank you Jesus didn't end up being um but God created the church because he knew we need one another and what would I have done without the church? We cannot do this life alone. So church, no matter what season of life um, you are in, get planted in God's house. As it says in Hebrews 10, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Even if it's difficult, keep your spirit sweet. Don't let offence come in. Think how you can bless others because you could just be someone's answer to prayer. Hold one another up, show grace. But above all, dive into God's family wholeheartedly. Please, church, do that. Dive in and allow him to teach you and develop you in his house. Through the good times and the hard. Yeah, and both. <laughs> Um, let's pray, church. Father, we thank you that you um, made us um, to need others, that, we're, that we're, made, we're not made to do this life on our own, Lord. And I thank you for that. I thank you that you created the church and designed the church with that in mind, God, that we would be together, that we would grow together, we would encourage one another, God. We thank you for that. Lord, I pray for each and every person listening to this today. <clears throat> I pray that, um, that they would plant themselves deeply and firmly in your house, God, that they would build a circle of people around them who encourage them, that God, even if they don't have that circle yet, God, I pray that they would know that the church is your answer, God, and that that, that is where they will find their breakthrough, that is where they will find their friendships and they will find their fellowship, God. And Lord, I pray that we would all um, be unified, God. I pray that there, that offence would not come, Lord. I pray we would be gracious with one another. Um, Father, I pray that you would let iron sharpen iron and that we work together to show this world that you love them and that we would do that through grace and love. Be with us today, Jesus, as, as we're walking with you. We love you, Lord. Amen. So church, have a great day. I hope this has blessed you and um, be blessed and be a blessing. Thank you, church. Bye now.